Hi everyone, it's Katie and today I'm following up my rather disappointing haul or gift of the Dreslin Tarot um, with my much more exciting haul of the decks that I've acquired um, or bought myself in September and October. I haven't really bought myself many decks in quite a while. I've, I've continued to do plenty of trading, but in terms of buying a new, a new deck, I just, I honestly can't remember the last deck that I did that with. Anyway, uh, this September and October, <laughs> I bought five new decks. Bought, purchased, brand new, five decks. Um, it was my birthday, so I had plenty of birthday money, um, and I just decided to go for it. So before we get into the independently published decks, I'm going to talk about these two mass-produced decks first. Now this first one I actually purchased um, on a bit of a, bit of a whim. Um, I was out for the day with Ethany. Um, a beautiful Ethany from here on YouTube as well as Mel from um, Where My Soul Whispered and Sarah from Fairy Sarah and another person but I'm not sure if they like have a public presence a social media presence if they do I'll leave a link to that below I just don't want to like name them out them in a video if I'm not sure but those three people all have YouTube channel so I'll leave a link to that below we had a lovely day out in the Melbourne city and we went to the Haunted Bookshop which is a really cool bookshop kind of esoteric occult bookshop in the city um, and he sells a bunch of tarot decks and I saw this beauty which I've often wanted but never got and it's just so cute it comes with this little book which you can take out of the sleeve which is handy um, and it's pretty cool like it has a regular meaning and then a reverse meaning for all the cards and they're kind of snappy and to the point and but they're directive like they have little bits of advice in there they're not just like literally fortune telling um, which I kind of thought this might be but it's actually a fairly well thought out deck like quite a clever um, deck in terms of the imagery I did find this quite hard to open though <laughs> but that's all right um, I really love the backings I think they're so cute very playful and cute um, and I just I've done a few readings with this deck and I've actually just been quite playful with it because um, it's quite a fun little deck and I really like it um, the art is all very simple it's got this background the mages all have purple little corners here and then all of the other the suits have kind of corresponding colors as well which is cool we have the name um, and we kind of get like the basic symbolism um, or uh, a kind of simpler take on but it's still very much right away like the Seven of Pentacles. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, and it is, it's just really, really cute. Um, and I'm really totally digging it. I've done a couple of readings and I feel like this deck is a little bit sassy. It's quite fun. It's quite t direct as well. Um, oh, I don't read reversals, so that's interesting. I love this. It's just adorable. Like, um, it's very, very simple. But I think, as I said, it's not just like an, a complete novelty. I think when you see this, you think it's just going to be a throwaway novelty. But honestly, I feel like this is a really clever little deck. But it's super, super cute. But also just really effective and simple. And the size of it makes it quite a good little pocket deck. And I just think it's lovely. Oh, here we have the fool. Isn't he cute? All right, so that is... Um, I don't know, this is just like the complete tarot kit, although I think it's kind of been dubbed the Nova Tarot. Um, that's kind of the name, even though I don't think it's really on here. Um, but that's what people are calling it online, and that's kind of what it's under, I think, on Eclectic Tarot on the website. Um, but really cute. Next up for my mass-produced decks was the Star Tarot. Um, this book. I'm actually like fully reading this book, which I don't do very often. Um, but I've been waiting for this deck for so damn long. <laughs> I was following um, Kathy McClellan, her newsletter she used to send out, um, and just the fact that, um, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts about this, and perhaps one day I'll do a review, but she goes through the symbolism that she put in the cards, and to me that is just vital in a good um, companion book. And there is so much symbolism, like literally every single thing that is in the card has been very very carefully chosen um, and I just think that's awesome so I am taking my time to read through that which as I said isn't something that I do 
um, for all decks and I did a video about me <laughs> trimming and edging um, the Star Tarot, which I'll leave a link to if you're interested um, because this deck originally did come with very large borders and I cut those suckers off and I think it's just beautiful. In fact, it's so vibrant um, that I actually found myself, especially when I was laid out while I was edging it, I almost kind of thought for a second that they were holographic. Like it looked like if you, like cards like this, I don't know, I think it's just the color and how vibrant they are and then the light. Um, it just looks like if you turned it, it was gonna be holographic. <laughs> There's quite a number of cards that almost caught me out like that. This death card, I just think is one of the most incredible death cards I've ever seen. Um, this is the Hierophant. Um, which some of these cards are really quite not traditional at all and then others are really obvious um, It's just she's so thoughtfully put this deck together and it's just incredible I was actually um, quite emotional when I opened it up and I think in part because it is so beautiful And I knew I was gonna totally love this artwork But also just because I've been following it for so long and then to finally have it in real life in deck form was just really exciting um, I know there's quite a few of us who have been um, following the deck. It's so interesting. She's really brought together kind of two different realms. It's really practical and all about earth-based spirituality and connecting with the earth and loving Mother Earth. Like it's so earthy, but then it is also so cosmic. It's just such an amazing, and we have a lot of this duality that she talks about, whether it's in like a black and a white animal of some kind or other ways that she's depicted that. And literally every single thing you see in the cards, she's explained, um, and they have a specific meaning. There's a lot of chakra imagery, um, whether really explicitly or not, in the deck as well. This is another one that I thought was going to be holographic, I think. I don't know, it's just, it looks like it could be holographic if you turned it. <laughs> it's not, I promise, but it looks like it could be. Anyway, it's super beautiful and I know this is going to be a deck that um, I'm going to spend plenty of time with. <sighs> so beautiful. So gorgeous. I'm so happy. I love this Four of Swords too. Anyway, let's move on to the indie decks. Now for the indie decks, which is so exciting. Um, I'm not, obviously they're already unboxed because it was late at night and I was excited, but you know, I still want to show you guys. And I also wanted to talk about an amazing, amazing tip that somebody gave me in the comments of my videos and then we spoke about it in the For Love of Cards group. That little red tarot, the British UK um, blog and shop, um, Beth, I think her name is, so, like ships worldwide. Um, with a 10 pound standard fee for any amount of decks that you want um, or a 15 pound fee tracked so I was just kind of like shocked and then ran straight over to Little Red Tarot and bought these because <laughs> basically these are three decks especially the Mesquite Tarot oh my god um, all three of them really I've been wanting and thinking about buying these two for quite a while the Mesquite's newer to me but I've wanted these decks for a very long time. Um, but they're not cheap to begin with because they're indie decks. And then postage from the US, it's like $20 to $30 per deck. And so it's difficult to justify that, especially I already have like 50 decks. Like, why do I need more, right? <laughs> um, but I really did want these three decks. And I, there was just no, like I'd already kind of decided that I wasn't going to get these two unless I could get them in a trade. Um, but this one was really calling me. And then when I ran over to Little Red Tarot and I kind of did the math, basically what I paid, including shipping, was the same as what I would pay if I just bought two of these decks from the creators, if that makes sense. So I got one of them for free, basically, because I saved so much on shipping. So it still wasn't cheap, um, but as I said, this is basically my birthday present because um, I got 200 bucks for my birthday. This is what I spent it on. So where should we start first? I think we'll start with the Pagan Otherworlds. Um, I I told myself I was totally gonna bust the seal, and then when I came to it, I was like, no, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna be do the sneaky thing that everybody does and open it from the bottom, so you don't have to break the seal. Um, now this deck is probably the one I'm least excited about or thrilled about. 
but it's still pretty incredible. Um, and ugh, you guys weren't lying when you said the card stock and the quality is just, it's just heaven. It's unlike anything I've really felt before. The reason, there's a couple of reasons I'm not super thrilled with this deck. And to be honest, I kind of expected that. Um, these are things I kind of already knew to a large extent um, before I purchased it. So I still made that choice to do so. The reason I really wanted this deck is because of the pips, the miners. I've just, I fell in love with the miners, like head over heels. Um, the mages I'm not thrilled on and the courts I'm not thrilled on. Now, there's a few reasons for that. Cards like this, I literally can't look at this card. Um, I have pretty bad trypophobia and there's a lot of this sort of shit in this card, in this deck, but that is the worst one. So that card is just not going to be used for me. You can look up trypophobia if you want. <laughs> um, although it's a pretty common sort of phobia, so yeah, you might, you might find that you have it too if you look up too many pictures. Anyway, I really love these Moon Phases cards. I think they're really beautiful. And it's a cool little touch. It's really gorgeous and oh my god. I even just adore the backing. Like that's just gorgeous. Um, it's just really incredible and beautifully done. And there's like a really kind of... I don't know. Like the other two decks are quite modern and vibrant. And this deck is just like the opposite. Um... This is kind of weird to me though. Like it's the people in this deck that I'm, I appreciate that the artwork is incredible, but I don't know. They just feel and look a bit strange to me. I quite like this though. Um, but ultimately one of the things that I don't like about this deck is as I, I'm gonna basically echo <laughs> Tom Benjamin, is that it's just literally a white people deck. And I somewhat appreciate the argument that, well, it's a Celtic pagan deck, you know, right? There weren't black people running around in, like, Ireland and Scotland and stuff, you know, 3,000 years ago. Um, you know, maybe that's true. Um, but then we get to cards like this. There's a lot of that more Christian symbolism that we see in Rider Waite Smith still in this deck. Like the idea, like the idea of the snake and the apple and Adam and Eve, like that shit didn't exist in um, pre-Christian um, Celtic paganism either. So I don't know, that kind of breaks that argument for me a little bit. <laughs> um, but, you know, I knew all that going in. I really like this. I love that death card. Um, and, oh, the devil, I don't know. I mean, it's cool and it's creepy and it kind of reminds me of that episode of Doctor Who that nobody likes to talk about because um, <laughs> it's weird and creepy. So much of this deck is just gorgeous. The Judgment, again, very, very Christian sort of imagery, which, you know, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, it was the pips that made me want this deck um, because they are everything that I like about pip cards. <laughs> um, Semi-scenic um, or... I don't know what the word is because these feel very scenic. They're just without the people. Um, so basically they're very right away in many ways. Just strip back a little bit further. And I love them. Like I remember I was watching a um, walkthrough the night I was deciding whether I was going to buy this deck. And I was getting towards the end of the mages and I was pretty much like, eh, probably not. And then it started flipping into the minors and I'm like, hmm. I think so. <laughs> so it is definitely the minor arcana that has done it for me. Anyway, I know this deck has kind of been all over the place the past year or so. Um, and I think with good reason. It is incredible and the quality and everything about it's just it's just money, isn't it? Okay, next up is the Sassari Beto Tarot, or fondly dubbed the Sassy Burrito Tarot. Um, <laughs> this deck... Um, was the one out of the three that Blair liked the most. I kind of, he sat down with me and helped me choose which ones I was going to get and then I ended up getting all of them. <laughs> um, but it came with this really cool little book. It's not very thick, but, and I haven't spent a lot of time looking through it, but it seems really quite useful, you know? Um, it's not a whole lot of information, but it's certainly enough, especially if you're already familiar with the tarot. Um, and it's always nice when it comes with something from the artist so you can get a little bit of their perspective. The box is really beautiful. This is the backing. So pretty. And the cards. Oh, 
I love them. I actually, the first time I saw this deck was on Elisa's channel, quite a while ago now. Um, and I wasn't, I mean, I liked it. I really liked the art style. But I think I wasn't super into it because a lot of it is very modern. And, um, like, especially, we'll see in a second, the Emperor. I, I guess I haven't really ever had this sort of thing in my tarot decks before. And I've very rarely liked this sort of stuff in tarot decks that I've seen online. Um, like, the very, very modern sort of take on tarot. Um... I don't know, it's just never super been my thing. But actually this card, over the months of first seeing it, this card's grown on me and now I really like it. And that was that card ended up being part of the reason that I decided to buy it, interestingly enough. But as soon as I opened it up, there was just like a joy inside of me. I knew instantly that I could read with this tarot deck immediately. Like I didn't need to spend a whole lot of time getting to know it or whatever. It just seemed personable and accessible instantly partly because you know it's it's very much based on right away even if there are some differences but also just the art style it's quite friendly in a lot of ways and the colors it's just it just feels um like it wants you to read it um this card's pretty intense it's amazing i really i really dig that card yeah so this is a deck that i just think i love that it's very right of weight. A lot of the cards are similar to what we see, but there's quite a modern sort of twist to it. Also, totally love the moon. This doesn't look sad to me. In some ways it is, but it's more release, acceptance, um, which I just think is such a beautiful, beautiful moon card. And the sun, again, I love how it's blinding, because um, so often I think the sun can be. It's beautiful and it's warm, but it's intense. It's really intense love this judgment card love the world card i just ugh, love the cups card <laughs> oh, actually the card that complete i love so many of these cards but the card that i just think this is one of the most beautiful six of cups i've ever seen and so often the six of cups is a card that i don't super love um but this one i oh, just think it's so beautiful it's just a gorgeous deck, and I totally love the Nine of Cups. I like the court cards, and I've grown to know the court cards better and appreciate them, and I can read them fine now. But I think still, so often, they're a bit boring in a lot of decks. You know, they're kind of um, predictable. I really, really like the way that the courts have been portrayed in this deck and the Mesquite deck, and that is a big reason as to why I end up getting these two decks. Love the Ace of Swords. I could go through this whole deck, to be honest, but... This is already going to be a very long video, isn't it? And now for the Mesquite Tarot, which is kind of the thing that started this whole indie deck buy off. Um, because it was this that I was really like, oh shit, I really like that deck. Um, I saw it on Kasha's channel, Tarot Map, which I'll link below. Um, and it was, as I said, the court cards just totally did it for me. Um, and it's not very often I can say that where it's, it's the court cards that make a deck for me. Um, really cute little bag and sticker which is really cute too really like the backing I'm actually tempted to um, edge this one in gold although we'll see we'll see how I <laughs> what I end up doing um, I just think there's something about this that just kind of like slows your breath down um, it's so simple and there's a lot of decks with this I don't know what this art style is called some people say it's a bit like naive. Some people say it's modern. I d if someone if there's a word for this, like, it's like the holy simples kind of like that similar artwork. Even the circo tarot's that similar style. If anyone has a word for that, please tell me. I'm not obviously an art person, <laughs> but and a lot of the times I just kind of I'm not super into that. But the circo tarot is definitely an exception for me. One of my favorite decks. And this is the same. There's something about this deck that just, I don't know, I was just so taken by. Um, I literally sat there watching Kasha's video with my mouth a little bit open, going, how have I not heard of this deck and why do I not have it? <laughs> I just, I love how simple it is. Um, but it's so effective. I love those cards that can really bring the um, imagery down to 
it's most basic but it's still so evocative um, still so intuitive like look at that is that not just beautiful again gorgeous love the hermit now these cards are quite small but I love that about them the court cards they've been renamed and the king is now the leader and to me this looks like he's in a wheelchair or a walking aid of some kind and that just makes me really happy because we don't see enough of that sort of stuff in decks and I mean maybe that wasn't the intention but I haven't read the book yet obviously um, but I like that that's what I see in that the Noah replaces the Queen in the traditional deck which I love the student is the knight and the novice is the page I just love that that it's so gender neutral um, it's just like anybody can be any one of these things and I know we say that about the court cards but I mean they're still pretty gendered <laughs> even the way we talk about them is still very gendered so this just removes that and I just love it and again with these kind of not super overly scenic super illustrated just really really simple sweet and simple is definitely what I think of with this deck and I love the color palette it's so soft but really effective it really creates its own little world or its own little portal into a world I really like this three of pentacles too kind of looks like a um, mirrors I don't know if you ever played those games when you were younger of a whole bunch of you like holding mirrors and trying to like line up in the right spot to reflect a light to like around the corner or something. <laughs> That's kind of what that reminded me of when I first saw it. Um, do we have more court cards again? Yeah, we do. So this is the leader. I think these are going to be called arrows, but they're swords basically. Um, as I said, I haven't really read the book yet. Or I haven't read the book. The Noah, the student, and all the knights, you know, you see them doing something, they're active, they're actively learning, whereas the novice just kind of seems open to the experience, um, and just experiencing, being there, I just think it's gorgeous. So I'm super, super, like this is the deck that I was most excited about, and this is the one that's had the biggest um, impact or had the, I've had the biggest response to um, in terms of my emotions and just physical response as well. So I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me and checking out five new decks um, with me. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any comments or questions or if you have been working with any of these decks and you want to tell me a little bit about them I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and as always I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, if you're new here um, feel free to subscribe. I'm making two videos every week at the moment, which is a lot of fun. Um, so I'd love to see you around. And please comment and say hi, so I know I know I can get to know you. Um, I'm pretty active with my comments. I always try to reply to as many as I can. Anyway, I'm rambling because I'm getting tired. <laughs> I will see you guys all again very soon. So much love. I hope you're well. Bye.